morning, everybody in the Lord. Jesus Christ be with you this morning. Our sister Janet, she welcomed you this morning, but I also want to welcome you with a warm heart as we gather together here this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to hear the word of the Lord. Today's message is called the storm of life. In the past two weeks, I shared with you what the Holy Ghost placed in my heart. The first one was to show mercy, and the other one was integrity, a good name. But before I start, I'd like to pray. Heavenly Father, as we are here in your name, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, with the power of your Holy Spirit, we want to give you thanks and praises. And Lord, please stir up our hearts that we will hear this message with a humble and with a heart that is willing to do your will. With a heart that is starving and thirsty for you to hear your word this morning. And not only this morning, but every day of our lives. Lord, I know that you place this morning in my heart the message for this congregation, the brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to give you thanks. I pray that this will be for your glory and that I will share nothing else but what you place in my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. So the message today is called the storm of life. Why did I come with this message? In the past few, not years, but months, I went through many challenges in life. I can't share at the moment this. But if, you go to, if we go together to Jonah, the first chapter of Jonah, if you have a Bible, I'm going to read from the authorized version. So let's go together to Jonah. You know, many of us, when we see a storm coming or when we see the forecast, we tend to say, oh, I know that tomorrow is going to rain. Oh, I know that tomorrow is going to be good weather. Every one of us, I believe, that we're watching the forecast. If we want to do something on that certain day, we're always watching the forecast. For example, me. I, because it's summer now, I started to put the clothes outside. But every time I need to look at the forecast before I can put the clothes outside. I don't want to end up with them being more dirty than before. But the message today that I want to share with you is not actually a physical type of storm. But it's a spiritual, it's a godly storm. So let's read together. We know the prophet Jonah, he is different compared to the other prophets. He was one of the only one prophets who actually rejected in a way what God told him to do when he sent him to the city of Nineveh. So you know, we ourselves tend to, when God gives us a message, in our hearts, we have this feeling sometimes that, oh, this message might not be for me to share with other people. It's okay, I can let someone else do that. Why should I share this message to that certain people? So, let's read together from the beginning. I want to read the whole chapter of Jonah, the chapter 1. It says here, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise! Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness is come before me. So here God is giving an instruction to Jonah to go to the, that certain city, who their sin was so great before the Lord. But let me tell you one thing here. God is always sending His servants before destruction. 
It says in another passage of the Bible that he will not execute first some judgment before warning the people. So here it says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So here we have a prophet of God who is actually doing the opposite of God, what God asked him to do. And went down to Joppa, here, uh, Jonah, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the miners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the waves that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it up, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, Everyone to his fellow, come, and let us cast lots that we might know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the Lord fell upon Jonah. <coughs> then say they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear God, I fear the Lord, the God of heaven which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and he said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For these men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea might be calm unto us? For the sea wrought, the sea wrought and was tempest. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the man rode hard to bring it to the land where they could not. For the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech you, O Lord, we beseech you, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him fall into the sea, and the sea ceased from their raging. And the man feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered sacrifices to the Lord, and made vows. <coughs> and you know what's happening next, that the sea, so like the sea, Jonah was thrown into the sea, and the well sold him up. And we know the message. But this morning I want to share with you something very important. We all tend to think that God is always bringing good things to us. But let me tell you one thing. Sometimes when we see too much good, our hearts tend to depart from the Lord. Every time we see here in the story of Jonah, when he received the message, from the Lord to go to the city of Nineveh, at the beginning he refused it. So it's exactly for every one of us. A man of God said, of course this was in Romania, 
Now, we have, of course, we have the presidential elections. Almost in every country you see that 2024 is a year of elections. In the United States, there is an election. In the United Kingdom, there is an election. In Romania, there is an election. And in more countries. And a man of God say, I pray that this might not be true, but a man of God, he prophesied that this will be the last election of, in the time of peace that we see in 2024. Again, I say, I pray this, is, this might not be true. But we see, I believe that God gave us a time of peace just for a short time, but remember this, that before peace, a storm will always come. You see that, I believe since 1989, another man of God, the Holy Spirit spoke through another man of God in 1980s and 1990s, that He is going to give us a short time of peace. But this peace will not be so that we slack, but this peace will be to prepare ourselves for the storm that will come very soon. But we see these days that many people, because of too much <coughs> peace, too much comfort, too much ease, too much goodness, they are not seeking the Lord anymore with a true heart. There was another story. This is a real one. Again, everything that I told you so far is something that really happened. This one, again, is in Romania. There was another story with a young man who said to his father, the young man was probably maybe a teenager. His father was a true believer in Christ. And the young man saw the... He saw the father praying so much for him. And he, the young man said to his father, Let, leave me alone with your God. You don't need to pray for me. You know, we tend to see like a lot of young people these days when you try to pray for them or share, wanting to share Jesus Christ with them, they think that they are their own gods. They, they don't want to hear. We live in this society, unfortunately, where we have too much, how you say, comfort. We like, we like to lay down and not do anything for the Lord. So this man, after he said this to his father to leave him alone with his God, his father gave him a very good reply saying, I will pray for you every day. And this man, after his father told him a few years has passed, and he needed to pass through a great storm for him to gather together in the house of God to become a truly believer. He had an accident a few years later and he lost one eye. But not his soul. His soul was not lost, thank God. He went through a great storm. He had an accident at work. He used a machine and the machine cut his arm off completely. He doesn't have one arm and yet God, you know, God choose sometimes great hardness in our lives so that we turn back to Him. So this man needed to go through a very hard time in his life so that he would come back to God. He would come back to Christ. It looks like the sacrifice that he needed to go through was an hour. But some people have other harnesses. You remember what I said earlier. The Holy Ghost spoke through a man of God in the 1980s, 1990s, that this, he is going to give us just a short time of rest before the harness will come. But the time of rest doesn't necessarily mean the harness will not come. You know? We are always thinking about, oh, what if the war will reach this country? Or what if uh, uh, something very bad will reach this country? 
But you know, hardness or stones doesn't necessarily mean wars. You know, we can live in a time of peace, but something physically might happen to us. People are hit by cancers, by all types of sicknesses, even in the time of peace. So God never promised that the storm will not come into our lives. But He said that through great tribulation we shall overcome. Jesus never promised us that we will live a hard, a, let's say, a life without any hardness. But He will say that with this hardness, we will save our souls. Like the gold is being tried in the fire. So my question for you this morning is, is the storm currently now in your life? Have you passed the storm? Or you didn't see yet any storms? I believe for most of you that you already faced the storm. Whether the death of a child, whether the death of a sibling, whether a sickness, betrayal, unforgiveness. If we go together to Job chap chapter 16. So let's go together to Job, Job chap chapter 16. We have this man of God that gave, God gave a good record of him, saying, There is none like him on the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fear God and is true evil. So we have this man of God that God himself is exactly how I say what I shared last week. So this is this one with <laughs> Jeremiah and Jesus Christ. These three people, I believe they were like, you can use even a parable of the suffering that they went through. Job, Jeremiah and Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So this man, even though he was doing good in the eyes of the Lord, you see that the storm didn't pass him. He needed to go through the same storm that each one of us needs to go so that he will be perfected. So we know that he lost all his wealth, he lost all his children, you already sense the, the pain that he had in his heart. And not only that, but he also had his own friends who were there for him when he was doing well. But in the time of his distress, take a look what it says at verse 20. My friends scorned me, but my eyes, my eyes put out tears unto God. My friends scorned me. Folks, I want to ask you these questions. One of them is, who is your actual friend? Is this he? Is your friend the one that is only with you when you're doing good? When you are wealthy, when you are happy, is that a real friend for us? Or is he your true friend, the one that is with you in your storm? It looks like here, Job, these three men they were not actually his friends. The way how they try to make him feel miserable. I want to share with you another story. The story of a mother with five children. So this is the story again. This is a real thing that happened in Romania. I like to share with you stories that really happened. This one was with a mother in Romania living in a village and they had just one whale of water. 
that was at about six, seven hundred meters away from her house. And she needed to raise her children, five small children. Her husband was working and they struggled greatly. And the neighbors, her neighbors in that village, they tried to stop her from taking water from that only well. Because they say, oh, because you, you have five children, the well will get drawn. You'll take all the water from the well so we will not have water ourselves. So these missionaries, there were two or three missionaries going into that city. No, sorry, it was a village. They went into that village and they found this poor woman. She came from taking water after she walked six, seven hundred meters with uh, like quite a few bottles of like waters, a few liters of water. She walked, you know, five, six, five, six hundred, seven hundred meters is like about twenty minutes, thirty minutes walk, only to get water to have enough to wash the children's clothes and to cook something. And these people of God, after they heard her story and saw her pain, they spoke with a company who were making holes in the ground to build for her, in her yard, to build a well of water. And this company said that because in that village it's hard to build a well of water, because it's hard to find water, they might need to dig for two, three times. So they expected to dig for about 20 meters depth. And they asked these missionaries, they, they might need to prepare some money, more money for that. But these people of God, they prayed that it would not be necessary to, to dig for two, three times. And thanks God that when they started to dig, they needed to dig just six meters. And already they found water. Glory to God. And let me tell you, this is not the end of the story. After they found water, she gathered with her husband and she gathered all the neighbors who rejected her from getting water from there. And I say, she said to them, because you rejected me from taking water from the well. I want to show you this kindness also, that I'm not going to do this to my neighbors. I'm going to name this well the river of God. So that everyone who has no water will come there and will take water. Hallelujah. 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 So she named it the, the river of God so that everyone will have water. And let me tell you, this is not the end. The same river, the same well of water that had a river under it, in just a couple of weeks from six meter depth went to have to be at just three meter only. Imagine the water flowing from that well from six meter depth to three meter. Hallelujah. And now that well of water is still used up to this day. You see, the storm that she went through she might have went through the same problem for probably months or years without having water. And yet God used that for the glory. For, for His glory, sorry. God used this for His glory so that all the neighbors would see that He cares for her. Yes. And not for this, but this to be used as a testimony for people to know and to give glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again, I want to tell you this, that God is using people, His servants, to warn the people before the storm will come. So the story that I gave to you was one of the stories. So you see, God didn't say about a story that is the, about 
the storm that it might come, but God will definitely bring a storm so that our faith will be perfected. So that we trust to obey Him. That we will be willing to obey Him. There were people in this world who they were seeking after riches. There are still people up to this day who are seeking wealth. They are working so hard to earn a lot of money. But we know stories with millionaires. Even though they have millions in their accounts, you know, the storm came also to them. But they were not willing to turn back to God. I want to give you just the story of one man. We know the Steve Jobs. We know that he was the creator of the company called Apple. And uh, he brought a lot of his a lot of wealth to his treasury, a lot of wealth to his uh, storehouse, you can say. He was a well-recognized person in the world. But even though he was a millionaire or billionaire, we know what happened with him. Out of sudden, the doctor discovered that he had a cancer of his pancreas. Even though he had millions, he had millions in his account, his millions were not able to save him. There was another man who had three houses. This one again was a, is a real story. He had three houses. He was a rich man, he had a lot of money, and he, out of sudden, he got sick with a very bad sickness. And he went to his own personal doctor, saying, I have three houses, I'll give you one house if you kill me from this sickness. You know what the doctor told him? He told him, well, what I can give you is just medicine, but only God can kill you. The only thing is just, I can just treat you, but only God is the one that can cure you of this sickness. Another story I want to share with you is, um, if we go together to Acts, Acts chapter 27, we have Paul here, he was, uh, again this is another example of a storm. Is exactly how I said before that God is also sending his servants to warn the people of a coming storm. It's exactly how the Holy Ghost spoke in, 90, in the 1980s, 1990s about a short time of peace before the storm will come. We have this man of God, the great disciple of God, Paul the Apostle, who went through all beatings, scourgings, and probably in Acts 27 he was even in chains, bound in chains. He was taken to the Rome to be judged there by the Emperor himself. After he went to Jerusalem, so if you go to yeah, chapter 27, it's from verse 21. But before I read that, here, before they departed from that certain island that they were before, Paul warned them that a storm is going to come and it's going to put all the people's lives at risk. But the captain of that ship, he didn't listen to him, saying, Why should I listen to you? Me having a profession, I'm an expert in uh, knowing how to uh, use a boat, how to use a ship. So the captain probably even looked from high at him, looking, who is this person that I should listen to him? Just this one person. So the captain chose rather to listen to the 
the people who were maneuvering the, the boat and the ship. But not long after they departed from that island, a great storm came. And that storm put the life of everybody at risk of dying. And it says that they didn't, eat, they didn't even eat for a few days because of the, the distress that they went through. And here, take a look at verse 21. So chapter 27 of Acts, verse 21. So after they went through all the problems that the, sh the ship was about to break down and all of them to die there, take a look at the reply of Paul. How he answered them, say, Verse 20, but after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye shall have hearkened unto me, and have not loosed from Crete to have gained this harm and loss. So you see in our lives, God is using his servants also to warn us of the things which will come in the future. I went in the past to uh, a church service. It was in, uh, in Manchester, Southport. These people, they didn't know me. And uh, while being there, someone came to me and he told me that God has a plan for me. But I should not depart from the way. So God gave to this person a message, a message to me, which was a few years ago. So the things that I went through, it makes me think that God already knew the things that I'm going through. I don't know if that will, that was that message was for me at this time after getting married or if it was before I got married. But this message that the man of God gave to me was a spiritual message. Hallelujah. We have another person here. Probably many of you heard about John Newton. He was a sailor, a slave trader. He was, uh, when he was young, his mother died. I think when he was about seven years old, his mother died. And in the story, it says that the, the mother was praying for him that blessed he would come to the Lord. And while living his youth, he had bad examples in his life. He went with other righteous people doing bad stuff, teaching others to do bad stuff, drinking, mocking other people. And at one point in life, he started to be a slave trader. And he says that while he was going, he was a sailor, while he was on the sea, a great storm came. And he says that that storm lasted for 11 days. And while the storm was on the 10th day, so for 10 days, he couldn't gather his thoughts. So they were afraid, they were in the middle of the sea, closer to no island. So they believed that they were already gone. Their life was at jeopardy. But he said that, a thought came into my mind, into his mind, sorry. They, he said that the thought came into his mind. And that thought said to pray to the God of his mother. To pray to the God of his mother. And it's very interesting that at that time, when he was still very young, someone gave to him a Bible, a small Bible. And he opened the Bible, of course, first time he says that he opened up Proverbs. And the other time when he opened, 
It was uh, from the Gospel of Luke that says, of course, it is also in the Gospel of Matthew, but that message that he opened from the Gospel of Luke, it was with Jesus saying, if you who are evil know how to, do, to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give good gifts to them that put the trust in Him, the day to today that ask Him? So he asked at that time that if you go through that storm alive, he will turn his life to Christ. Of course, it's very interesting that the storm stopped exactly in the same day that he asked that. And like uh, many of us, when we ask, when we go through a great problem, a great tribulation in our heart, a great storm in our heart and in our lives, we say, to, we ask our God, if you rescue me from this storm, I promise that I will come to you. Of course, it didn't happen straight away. So I believe for many of us, there, is a, there was a transition when we came to God. Hallelujah. And that transition needs a foundation. I will end very soon. That transition needs a foundation when someone comes to Christ. It's exactly how Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 it was on the seven of the mouth. Therefore, it's from verse 24 to verse 29, chapter 7. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do them, I will like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. I want to ask you this. Have you passed through your storm of life yet? Or do you believe that it's going to come very soon? Do you have a strong foundation so that Jesus Christ will be the Lord of your life even through your storm? Have you asked the Holy Spirit to guide you into that storm. Not to pass around the storm, but to guide you so that your, your faith will become stronger. <coughs> Verse 26, that everyone that hear these sayings of mine and do them not shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sun. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. There were two people in a city. I know a brother in Christ who, again, he's a missionary, and he, he's traveling a lot, he's meeting with many people, and uh, while he went, to someone's house, that person told him, because his house didn't look how you will expect it to look like. And his friend told him that he spent, he rather spend 5,000 euros more on that house for the foundation, so that the foundation will be thicker in case, because in Romania you will see quite a few earthquakes, especially on, in one region of the country. So because of that, because he knew that that region where he lives has many earthquakes and floods, he wanted to make his foundation stronger, so he invested more in his foundation. But his house didn't look that great for people to be amazed. Ooh. And he said that after he visited another person whose house looked 
very nice outside. And that person whose house looks very nice outside, they said, you like it, right? I invested more in the house, but I saved more from the foundation. I'd rather spend less on the foundation because people, they can't see that. It's just on the ground, nothing will happen. So I prefer to spend more on the kitchen, to put better curtains, to buy a better sofa, so that when the people will come, they will be amazed. But let me ask you one of these questions. Let me ask you this thing. In a case of a great earthquake, in 1977, in Romania, there was an earthquake that shaked the whole country. And I believe tens of thousands of people died in Romania in 1977. In a case of an earthquake exactly the same magnitude, tell me this thing. Which one do you think that you last? The one with the good foundation or the one that looks better? Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I want everybody with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to think within our lives. And like passing yet through this storm. Is it a storm going to come? It is exactly what I said at the beginning of the message. A man of God, I'm not sure if he's, he's saved, if he was real what he says or not, if it's going to happen or not. But I want us to think about these things. If these are going to be the last elections of the time of peace, is our house in order? So that when the storm will come, we will not fail. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There was once a storm on the lake, and they were going to go to the other side. Jesus had promised them that they're going to make it. He said, Let us go over to the other side. And they got in the boat, and the boat started to shake. The storm came. And uh, I think it was Peter wants it that said that he saw Jesus walking on the water and he said to him, Jesus, if it's really you, let me step out. Let me step out on that water. And he said, it's, and he stepped out. He was all right as soon as he kept his eyes on Jesus, but once he took his eyes off Jesus, the storm engulfed him. But Jesus didn't leave him there, did he? He picked him up and put him back in the boat. And you know, yes, there will be storms in our lives. Each one of us will go through storms of illness, sickness, finance, difficulties. But we used to sing a little chorus at Sunday school years ago and it was with Christ in the vessel. We can smile at the storm, smile at the storm. It's when we know that Jesus Christ is the centre of our lives and that he's in that storm with us. Like we said before, the Apostle Paul said, an angel stood by me in that chapter, didn't it? And an angel stood by me and said, as long as we all stay in the boat, we're going to make it. The boat's going to break up, but we're all going to make it. And so... Yes, we will go through storms, but if we know the Lord Jesus Christ today as our own personal Saviour, and He's in that vessel with us, we can smile at the storms. Amen. Because we know that He's in total control. He's the God of the wind. He's the God of the waves. And I don't believe anything comes into a believer's life unless the Lord allows it. Amen. Yeah. Nothing. And it's always ever, it's never to destroy us or to bring destruction. It's always to make us stronger and our faith stronger in Him. So thank you, Christian. That was a good word this morning. And yes, the storms are going to come, church. Yeah. I don't understand politics and all that, but the storms will come one way or another. And I know these people here this morning that you're actually going through a storm now in your own individual life with sickness and difficulties and things. And I want you to know that when Christ is in the vessel, you can make it. You can smile at the storm. Amen. 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 We're going to close uh, with a song now. Bobby to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything, but be honest, I just went. I saw the day.
biblical God. Please just come and sit on the front and the elders and the leaders and uh, Christian will come and just pray God's blessing over you. If not, stand with you.